uh, this is another video lecture uh, uh, sequel to uh, the previous one uh, where we discussed uh, the effect of inter-symbol interference. So we try to analyze uh, uh, analytically and conceptually. So inter-symbol interference uh, is due to uh, the noises or the teeth of uh, individual symbols are getting affected by adjacent symbols rather all the other symbols uh, affecting the particular uh, symbol at k sampling time okay so also we saw its effect on uh, the constellation the constellations becomes uh, noisy as well as uh, an effect uh, in terms of eye diagram we try to analyze uh, in the previous video lecture uh, this uh, this video uh, basically is about uh, uh, an important criterion uh, uh, when signal is transmitted through bad limited channel called as Nyquist criterion. Okay, let's try to understand uh, in this video lecture. So basically our job is to make YK which is the kth receiver sample uh, to be distortion free. Uh, for that it should be equal to strictly equal to just IK. Right. So rest other factors should be go down to zero. So for this we need obviously we need uh, xk minus n as zero. So currently we are ignoring the uh, factor of uh, awgn or the colored noise itself. Okay. So we are just assuming the effect of inter-symbol interference uh, uh, in order to make our uh, analysis easier. Okay. So for this we need xk minus n should be equal to zero for all k not equal to n, okay? So how we are going to do? So in other words, our task is to find such x of t, such function, such that when seen in sample term domain at receiver, okay, satisfies above criteria, okay? So yk being the sampled uh, uh, samples at the receiver, okay, should satisfy yk is equal to ik for all x k minus n is equal to 0 for k not equal to n okay we need to design such x of t so that actually is a thrust of uh, Nyquist criterion which makes uh, zero inter symbol interference right so let's under try to understand more about this okay we need to observe we need to recall that x of t actually contains g of t g of t is what G of t is uh, our pulse shaping filter at the transmitter. C of t being the channel. H star of t is in fact our uh, optimum receiver, optimum receiving filter. So C of t is a channel. We don't have any control over it. H star of t is actually is a response uh, to the input to the matched filter. Right. So we don't have any control over these two. Right. So all we have the control over uh, on G t. So we should understand that, uh, you know, X of T is actually is controlled only by G of T. So we need to design such G of T such that X of T satisfies this criterion. Okay. So X of T, as I told, it's a convolution of H of T and H star of T minus T. So H of T is uh, the, in turn, is convolution of uh, the transmit filter and uh, channel. Okay, this we have seen in now. Uh, when we studied uh, uh, the transmitter and receiver picture as a whole. Okay, so in time in uh, time domain, if it's convolution in frequency domain, it's just multiplication of uh, uh, these two responses. Okay, so for now, for being uh, for uh, for this case, we are uh, assuming the channel to be ideal and band limited, bandwidth limited, so that C of f is equal to one. So it need not be just one, it should, it can be a, just a constant. We are just normalizing the constant and uh, taking that normalization factor and uh, uh, taking C of, uh, C of f is equal to one over a finite bandwidth, okay? So if we assume such a kind of a channel, if we assume such ideal channel, G of f will be directly equal to H of f. So in other cases, in the later stages, we'll consider non-ideality of the channel and we try to analyze again. Okay, for time being, uh, so we'll be assuming we'll be taking out the effect of uh, c of f itself okay so if you assume so uh, is, as you can see the convolution in time domain uh, gets converted to frequency domain so it's just a multiplication of uh, h of f and uh, h star of f so which is nothing but square of the magnitude of h of f so since g of f is equal to h of f 
so i can replace uh, g of h of f with g of f and this gives the relation between x of f and g of f so carefully note this relation as if we design such a g of f which is actually the transmit filter or pulse shaping filter if we design such transmit filter it will directly affect x of f such that it it satisfies this criterion okay so that's a control that i was talking about earlier okay so this is a direct relation between x of f and g of f in frequency domain okay so as we know x of t is our analog signal x of f is our band limited spectra okay so these are four year pair uh, uh, that we already know so x of nt is in fact analog sampled signal this is a sampled signal at the receiver so whose frequency domain representation using fourier transform is simply a copied spectra okay so it's just a periodic signal which runs from minus infinity to plus infinity of x of f plus m m over t okay so this is how you know we know the relation between uh, various signals at this point so this is required to mathematically express our nyquist criterion so this is a conceptual understanding of uh, the nyquist criterion so how do we express in an analytical way in a mathematical way okay so nyquist theorem for zero si states that so it's a statement of nyquist theorem it states that the necessary and sufficient condition for x of nt which is our analog sample signal at the receiver should be one in the sense the normalized amplitude for n is equal to zero only at that instant of time so it is zero for all other cases okay whose fourier transform which is the pair that we just discussed should be equal to just a constant t right so summation of all the copied spectra in a periodicity should sum up, sum up to just t okay this should be the you know time domain representation of uh, nyquist theorem and this is a frequency of uh, domain representation of nyquist theorem Okay. so this is the actual statement of nyquist theorem for uh, zero isi so let's try to prove this this is a statement so we need to prove this as well just a statement it should not be suffice to analyze uh, to understand it better all right so let's pick up the criterion again so this is the criterion let's try to prove this so it's a proof is you know uh, straightforward uh, using our uh, time domain to frequency domain uh, uh, transformation uh, using fourier transform okay so in analog we know that x of t is simply an inverse uh, fourier transform of x of f so whose uh, relation that you know already okay so at sampling instance this analog domain so we need to sample at the receiver so at every integer multiples of symbol time x of nt where we will be replacing t by nt so wherever we find t we are going to replace by nt and this is uh, the actual uh, sampling instance okay. so for a sample signal x of f we know that uh, the fourier transform of sample instance is just uh, copied spectra over minus infinity to plus infinity okay. copied spectra of what so copied spectra of certain principal interval the principal interval being the symbol duration itself symbol time we have assumed it to be 1 over t <clears throat> so this is from minus 1 by 2t to 1 over 2t so this is the principal uh, interval uh, representation of our x of f so our complete x of f which runs from minus infinity to plus infinity is just duplications of uh, the primary the principal interval itself <clears throat> sorry uh, so let's try to break the interval uh, the integral over a finite range of 1 over t and let's try to duplicate over uh, the minus infinity to plus infinity range so we get so obviously so this is a primary interval so just one interval so may not be m is equal to 0 <coughs> sorry so this is just a representation where m is equal to 0 so <coughs> for any m is not equal to 0 so this is just one period and that one period or the <coughs> the the principal period has to be duplicated over minus infinity to plus infinity range <coughs> i'm sorry all right so this is our uh, pair of x of nt and x of f uh, using fourier transform pair okay so since we know that uh, uh, this is a linear operator so we can as well pull this summation inside the integral okay so 
So pulling that summation uh, uh, inside the integral. Before doing that, uh, you may carefully observe that the integral remit has uh, 2m minus 1 over 2t and 2m plus 1 over 2t. So this integral limits can be replaced and when you try to replace as a minus 1 over 2t and plus 1 over 2t, so accordingly we should change the variable inside the integral as well. So the integral variable f gets changed to f plus m by t and accordingly our df changes to d capital F. Okay, so of course we should replace this uh, small f by f plus m over t. So this minus is ignored because m is running from minus infinity plus infinity. So all the ranges of uh, m is taken care here. Okay, so uh, uh, similarly uh, if I try to replace f by f plus uh, m over t, so exponential of uh, j, j 2 pi f n t uh, should be replaced with f plus m over t uh, times nt. So if I try to express or uh, um, uh, split this exponential part into uh, capital F and uh, uh, small f, uh, sorry, uh, capital F and another product being e power j2 pi into m times n, this t and t gets cancelled. So it will be simply e power uh, j2 pi mn. Okay, since uh, this is an integral multiple of uh, 2 pi, so integral multiple of 2 pi uh, uh, in exponential part e power j any uh, integral multiple of 2 pi is always 1. So we'll be left with just uh, e power j 2 pi f n t and same thing is retained here. Right? So this is just you know they are changing the limits of the integral and uh, uh, the, uh, changing the variable f uh, of the integrand uh, to f plus m by t. Right? So this is the one that we have and we should proceed with this. So x of n t uh, is minus 1 over 2 t to 1 over 2 t x of m plus m by t uh, exponential h 2 pi f n t df. Okay. So uh, that as I told this uh, summation is a linear operator we can uh, as well pull this inside the integral. If I try to pull this in, inside the integral nothing else has been done here. So just pulling the integral inside and uh, taking our uh, 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 taking this complete factor, the summation of x of f plus m over t and representing it as b of f, uh, this can be compactly written in this fashion. So where b of f is of course uh, the term, the first term inside the integral, uh, which can be represented in this way. So that are, uh, as you can see, this is nothing but uh, b of f is a, is, a, is a function, is a periodic function with a period of 1 over t. Uh, since it's a periodic function which repeats, uh, which gets duplicated uh, for with every 1 over t, uh, this can be expanded using a Fourier series. Okay. So as you know, a Fourier series uh, consists of uh, uh, a coefficient bn times a power j2 pi f n t, n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity, of course. So we need to extract the coefficient here. So we need to find out what are these you know, coefficients. So I'm just naming these equations as 1 and 2 uh, just to utilize them at a later stage. Okay, so we need to find out, we need to extract the value of these coefficients. So in order to extract the value of these coefficients, so I'll try to uh, take out this exponential term by multiplying with e power minus j2 pi f n t. So if I try to multiply on both the sides with that, this will get vanished. So I, it will be independent of that factor and try to, I can try to extract the value of bn. Okay, I'll not only try to multiply with the uh, uh, opposite sign of exponential but also I'll try to integrate over a period of uh, 1 over t right, on both the sides. So if I try to do that, so the period is 1 over t, so in the sense it's minus 1 over t 2t and plus uh, 1 over 2t. So multiplying with exponential of minus this factor uh, on the, both the sides as I told, this will get vanished. So the product of these two is simply 1 and uh, the integral will just boil down to just 1 over t, right? 1 by 2t minus of minus of 1 over 2t will give you 1 over t. So the right hand side will simply boil down to simply bn over t. Now that I have bn at my right hand side, I can take this t to the other side and I can express this coefficient as simply t times the integral. Okay, so that's how I have tried to extract the coefficients bn. Okay. So if I put, if I name this as equation 3, 
Now, if I try to compare this equation 3 and this equation 1, if you carefully look at these two equations, the right hand sides almost, you know, are identical with each other, only for the fact that this is getting multiplied with the t and this has exponential in negative sign. This is in positive sign. Okay. So, let's try to compare these two and try to express bn as x of minus nt. So, since this is only the minus sign which is missing n compared to equation 3, I can express the coefficients bn in terms of the sampled signal at the receiver. Okay. So, bn is equal to x of minus nt. All right. So, this expression gives the coefficient values in terms of sampled output at the receiver. Okay. So, now we know that what should be the necessary condition for Nyquist criterion for 0 ISI as discussed earlier. So, what is the necessary and sufficient condition for Nyquist criterion for 0 ISI? So, that should be x of nt is equal to 1 just at n is equal to 0 and 0 otherwise. So, imposing, imposing this condition, so forcing this condition, what will be bn? bn will also be equal to the same condition for n is equal to 0, x of 0, in the sense it is 1 and for all n not equal to 0, bn will also be 0. So, it will follow the same principle of x of nt, but only for the fact that it gets multiplied by a term called as t. So, bn will be simply t for n is equal to 0 and 0 otherwise. Okay. So, with that, we can, uh, since we know now uh, the coefficients, we can substitute into equation 2. Okay. So, equation 2 gives us b of f and we know what is bn now. bn, b suffix n, exists only at n is equal to 0. Correct. So, bn exists only at n is equal to 0. So, this all summation is invalid for n not equal to 0. So, at n is equal to 0, the exponential is also 0. So, my b of f will be simply will be equal to t. Correct. So, when b of f is equal to t and I know that b of f can be further expressed as this summation. Correct. So, b of f is equal to t will, will definitely make summation x of f plus m over t as t itself. I think that is our Nyquist criterion. Correct. So, this was a, a necessary and sufficient condition in time domain which gives my frequency domain representation of Nyquist criterion in this mesh. So, hence the proof. So, this proof is straightforward. So, it takes, you know, a longer route of uh, uh, frequently switching from time domain to frequency domain and getting back uh, the same expressions. So, if you carefully look down uh, the individual steps, I don't think uh, it is difficult. Okay. So, that's about uh, the Nyquist criterion for 0 ISI and its proof, uh, proof analytically. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, the next video will follow further analysis of uh, ISI and all our job is to find out such x of t. We need to design such signals where uh, this condition is imposed. Okay. Thank you.